This box is the same as this box, but instead of being for this campaign, it's for this campaign! Right, we're not being funny or anything, but these two products are identical design-wise, much in the same way that any two Mythos packs are identical. If you have no idea what a Return To product is, then go back and check our massive three-part epic about the Return To The Night Of The Zealot. It's got jokes in, and way more information than you could ever need, including sun protection and water safety. And as this channel loves spoilers like Roland Loves Trauma, we aren't sure what we can say, as the nature of all Return Boxes is that they are nothing but spoiler. There are no new rules, no new investigators, and even the player cards are just experienced versions of the ones you have seen before. The driving force of this box is new scenario cards that change the way you play the existing adventures. And we can't talk about that, because we want you to play this product fresh and unknowing. So let's open it up and then compare the two products, and close your eyes if you see a spoiler. Both of them have a sturdy lid artwork on the side. Both of them have a strong base with a monotone version of their art on an insert and massive amounts of empty space underneath. Both of them have a bunch of dividers, and experienced versions of cards which came in their original product. Plus a load of new and exciting cards which we aren't going to show you here. Both of them have paper instructions, but the Dunwich one is double wide. And they have tacked on ultimatums, which first appeared in the Invocation 2017 event. Yes, there are still achievements. Unlike the original, you will definitely have to remove the insert to fit in the whole campaign. And the dividers. Now let's give you a quick look at how it is packaged. It comes shrink wrapped and has art all the way round. There is a QR code and the sleeve requirements on the rear, plus a reminder that you need both the core set and the original Dunwich Legacy to play. It is easy to cut the bottom square out and then use sticky tape to fix it all the way round to prolong the life of your box. The lid comes off easily, and the rule sheet is on the top. This time you have two packs of cards. The first has scenario cards front and back, and the next has a location face out, and a player card rear out. Next you have a really thick pack of dividers in their own Ziploc bag, and everything has the blue language sticker on for English. American English, not like real English. And there is no legacy envelope under the flap. Maybe one day FFG. This pack contains nothing but scenario cards, so you can put it aside until you are ready to play or sort everything. This mixed pack is easy to spoiler proof, just open it from the player card end and work your way down till you hit a scenario back. And those scenario cards follow straight on from the other pack, so put them at the bottom of those cards. Each scenario has a setup card like the previous return box, and there are plenty of different cards to add, spanning every different type of scenario card. Some chapters get more cards than the others and one part may feel different from the start, while others may change from what you are used to as you play. As mentioned, your dividers are in a lovely jiffy bag, which you can reuse to keep your tokens in, as you probably won't ever need to put your dividers away. They are sorted into three groups with a little bit of alphabetizing. First up, your scenario encounter cards are sorted chronologically. See, you should totally play extracurricular activity first. Lastly, you have the variable encounter sets that came in the Dunwich Deluxe. And in the middle you have your core box sets like rats, locked doors and so on, plus the new encounter sets from this box. And the cool thing is, where they have created a substitution set, they have tried to link the names to make things more intuitive, so locked doors become secret doors. The rule sheet is twice as long because you have more than double the icons to draw lines between, and because they have actually put in pictures of the instruction cards on there, maybe in response to feedback from confused consumers. Two things we did note however, are that there were roughly half as many playtesters for this product, and it was designed by Adam and Brady Sadler, who just designed the new Heroes of Terranoth. That's it people, you don't need a half hour video or a fancy aquatic vista. If you buy everything, you will buy this too. If you don't, then you won't. Oh my goodness, the player cards! FFG's secret weapon to make you buy any old nonsense. This box comes with 23 player cards. Yes, an odd number, which is always suspicious. Each class receives two pairs of cards. There is a new basic weakness, which is possibly the most terrifying yet, particularly for any investigator that relies on their signature card. And the odd player card is in fact a story asset, who we won't reveal, but did appear in a preview article. All of the player cards are experienced versions of Dunwich cards. Some of them come from the deluxe box, but not all. A few get cheaper, a few get more potent, and the solution just got stranger. Yes, you may have a slideshow. Oh, 
Oops, wrong slideshow. That's from next week's video. Here you go. some shibbity bibbities which they've copied and pasted from the doodly doo. But unlike the whatnot, you will definitely have to take out the thingy to put in the whatnot. There are shroud values that will make your eyes roll back into your head and lose all bowel control.